All right, welcome to tutorial number six. Um, this is what I'm going to talk about upscaling. And because upscaling works the same way in any model, it doesn't matter if you're using SDXL, 1.5 or whatever, um, I'm just going to use a very basic setup here. Uh, and most upscaling is done using image, the image line, so the blue ones. Uh, you can do a latent upscale, um, but it's more of an doing a latent upscale successfully is more of an art form than a best practice. Like uh, it can help you, and and if you know how to use it well, it can be great. But it's generally it, it's not going to give you the best results if you just want to get the image bigger. So upscaling. Is, is usually accessed um, from your main kind of set of Comfy UI um, samplers, and uh, it's got a couple of good ones. It's got upscale image by, and it's got upscale image by default, and it should also have an upscale image using model. Um, so you can use any of these three to get different effects, and upscale model is the one that a lot of people use at the end of a process. And they do this because um, it uses a model, like 4x whatever, whatever, or 2x whatever, whatever, and it will upscale it based off whatever this model wants it to be. And it'll bring out a really big image. So I'll bring out a really big image. And um, it's kind of, it's a very simple process. Um, so it doesn't take a lot of a lot of system resources to do this upscale. Like it's quite quick, and it makes very large images. Well, it depends on what model it is, but this is a 4x model. But if I zoom in, you can see it doesn't look quite right when you get right in on the model. If you zoom in on the uh, this model, it it tends it looks actually looks a little bit better, a little bit more makes more sense. But when you look at the faces and stuff in here, it's uh, uh, as you can see, there's some issues with it, and so it's not the best kind of thing to be using early in the process because of the fact that it goes up to 4x. Um, Generally, you want to save this one for using right after everything else. And one of the other nodes will be upscaling by image. And this one, you use pixel heights and widths. So you can just, you can connect this node through these width and height values and other nodes in order to do math and just upscale like by times two or whatever, if you want to. Um, one of the good ones to use that stuff for would be um, Defu's math nodes. But um, while it is very useful for that process, it's also very useful for this particular option here, which allows you to actually crop in from an image. If you make the image smaller than it was coming in and you say crop, center, it will crop inwards from the edges of your image. So it's a good way of getting rid of any distortions around the edges of your frame. Okay. Now, because we're trying to do a quick tutorial here instead of a long 20 minute ramble, um, I'm going to, I'm going to stop with just these, these particular nodes. I'm not going to go way into it with latents and custom upscale nodes yet. I might do them later, but, um, Anyway, suffice to say that these are the two basic ones that you want to be familiarizing yourself with. There's another one, uh, which is the upscale by, which is a very quick way of just going upscale it by this amount. However, I suggest if you are going to use this to stick to whole numbers, uh, preferably two, four, eight, and so on, because uh, you will get um, non-standard sizes, which may not work well with some of your future pipeline. Um, now that probably doesn't make any sense to you, but 
um, if you're using a tiled node somewhere further down the line to do stuff, um, having images of certain sizes can mess up that process. So it's something to be aware of that um, you need to be careful with what your resolutions are rather than just willy nilly putting it at point whatever and hoping it just works out. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you, uh, let's get rid of that. We don't need that for the moment. So we just do this one. Now, upscale by image, because it can just, um, let me just put that on fixed. Um, because it can just do the maths and times it by two, it's quick and so on, right? Now, if you look in on this times four one, you'll see it starts to look strange when you get right up in and look at it close. And if you look in on this one, it's more pixelated, is what this image becomes. As you upscale them in size. And you don't necessarily want these pixels, because this these are pixels that are made out of like 20 or 30 pixels. And these aren't just regular pixels, I'll show you. Uh, where are we? Uh, open image. So if we zoom in using the browser to things. Hang on. And we really zoom in, you can kind of see these are f these edges aren't sharp, they're fuzzy because they're made up of multiple pixels, even though they're one, they're supposedly a pixel. So the reason this is occurring is because upscale process just multiplies pixels, essentially. Whereas in this process, when you zoom right in, you'll see it's got sharp, non-pixelated edges. And that's because this process uses the model and just goes, like, it, it re, reinterprets the information being sent to it using the model. And um, so you'd be thinking, well, which one do I use? Both of them seem to cause artifacts on my image. Well, the interesting thing is we can actually combine the both of these. We can't combine this one, the... Um, because upscale image by, um, unfortunately, cannot go down. You cannot um, go sub one, it will throw errors. Uh, so instead, we're going to use the upscale image and give it an actual pixel value. Now, thankfully, we know what our pixel values are, which is 512. We know this is going to upscale that by times four. And so if we use this and we connect it instead to here, this is receiving a times four resolution image and then bring it down to 512. But we, we still want to upscale. We don't want to go back to the original thing. So we go 248, 2048, not 248. Actually, eh. We'll, we'll go, we'll go 1024, why not? 24. Probably be a bit better. Yeah. And if we, one second, I'll just fix this zoom in so you can see text. Oh, the, yeah, this is the trick with this. Um, this zoom value on the window that we've got here, um, you could, if you zoom out with this and then zoom in with the scroller, you can make this text appear when you're zoomed out further. It's to do with the way it renders stuff. All right. Now it is going to upscale Pi 4 over here using the model, and then it's going to downscale it to 1024. And I'll show you what that looks like compared to the previous one. Okay, so it's made this image now, which doesn't look great. And then it's gone, okay, let's bring that down again. So you can see it's upscaled, but there's not massive pixels. There's a lot smaller pixels now than in the previous one that we had. 
And essentially, it's a good way of, um, as you can see in this one, these are giant pixels made out of like 20 pixels. Whereas this one, when we zoom in on it, it's much smaller pixels with less distortions. Um, so this is probably the best way of doing an actual upscale process. You upscale by model, and then you downscale using a second upscale. Um, this is what I'd use for every time I try to upscale anything, this is what I use. So I would suggest anyone do the same thing, basically. And so yeah, that's that's the basic unit of upscaling that I suggest anyone makes use of, um, even up to further up in their workflows. Um, you can, of course, change this to much higher values. You can um, use different models in here. It's entirely up to you how you use this little kind of setup. But um, yeah, that's how I do upscaling anyway. Oh, and um, if you're going to do upscaling, it's a good idea to do like a sampler, upscale, sampler, upscale, sampler. Like do it in stages. So instead of going up to 8K or something, as soon as possible. Instead, you step it up through the resolution so that you get less artifacts in the image. All right. Um, uh, next tutorial is probably going to be on LoRa's. I was going to do this one on LoRa's, but um, unfortunately, um, there's been some issues with getting LoRa's to function properly on SDXL. So, anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, hopefully, you found it useful.